Hey, busy business people. I am here today with another entrepreneur taking action, Deanna Seymour. She ran a week of experiments in her business where she just tossed ideas at her audience to see what they would be interested in. And I'm getting the scoop today on what happened. So to kick things off, okay, so like you threw a bunch of ideas at your audience on social and email. Let's put that into perspective just a little bit. Like how big was your social following and your email when you did this? Okay, um, so I just call myself a micro entrepreneur, right? Like I feel like micro breweries are hip. So I'm just like embracing my small numbers. So, um, and I guess they're not that small. Like I always tell myself, what if, what if all these people showed up at my house? I would be very overwhelmed. So to answer your question, I have about... 200 people on my email list and about 500 people follow me on Instagram. Um, so that's like where I was when I did the experiment. I like that though. Like if you had all these people in your house, how overwhelming, yeah. that's a good way to look yeah, at it. Right. Cause, Cause I mean, they tell people all the time, it's more about the quality than it is about the quantity on the list. And you can do cool things if you've got good quality yeah. and a small list because you can pay attention to everybody. So I love that. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Um, so, like, what gave you the idea to kind of try this approach and see what they would do? Where did that inspiration come from? Okay, so I am diagnosed with ADHD. And for a long time, I just kind of, like, to be honest, this is a whole nother conversation, but I was so immersed in diet culture in my late 20s, early 30s when I got it that I was mostly just like, okay, cool, give me the meds because I heard I'm going to lose weight. So I didn't really pay attention to what that meant for me because, I mean, I had been sort of functioning pretty well my whole life. So I was like, I don't know, I'm going to get this medicine. Cool, you know? And so then I, like a few years ago or a year ago, I joined TikTok and I was like, oh, that's because my ADHD? Like, that's because my ADHD? That I'm like, why did my counselor really, like, we just didn't really, I mean, we were busy talking about boys and a bunch of other stuff I had to sort through. So I'm ADHD. And I feel like I've tried to sort of ignore that and be like, oh, I need to focus. I need to niche down. I need to be one thing and like stick to it. And then I just, I can't, I, li I cannot do it. I can't do it. And it was sucking all the fun out of my business. Cause I was always feeling like, oh, you just, you just said this thing and now you're going to try this thing and you're going to try this thing. And I'm, I was an art teacher for over a decade. So like trying new things and trying new processes is like in my DNA. So this idea that I have to like pick one thing and just like be a broken record about it forever was really stressful. <laughs> so I was like, how can I, but I mean, also people need to sort of know what you're talking about, right? Like I'm asking them to come on a crazy journey with me if I just am like all over the place. So I was like, how can I just tell my audience like what's going on and, and figure some stuff out. And then I was like, we just talked about like, they're people, they're not followers. They're not whatever. It's like, people who chose to follow me on social media. And I mean, a lot of them are, are my friends, like, which is another conversation again. I mean, they're not really my customers, some of my followers, you know, but they're there and I know they're not going to like judge me. So it's like, it's a safe space, right? Like I, it's my platform. I built it. Assuming everybody who hasn't unsubscribed is there for, or unfollowed likes, like is there for it. So I was like, okay, what can I do? And, and while I was kind of trying to figure that out, I started seeing some other women entrepreneurs in their stories, like just being more like wacky. I get, I don't know. I was just like, well, oh, this is refreshing. Like she's doing this. So there's a woman named Rachel Quint who is um, like, just talks about Steve Buscemi and she's like a little witchy and does some spell jars and, but she like coaches people too. So I'm like, well, she's talking about spell jars and coaching. So I could talk about different stuff. And I just was like, you know, peer pressure. I was like, well, they're uh, jump off a bridge. I'm like, they're doing it. So I'm going to do it. So the other thing about my brain is that I am very organized. And I do, I mean, like I have not been diagnosed with OCD, but I feel like I do have some tendencies where I'm like, okay, so I want to do this, but like, how is that going to look? Like I was a little bit not super spur of the moment. Um, so I did plan it out and I was like, I'm going to do it for a week. And honestly, like I hadn't really shown up in my stories that much. I wanted to, it was always on my list. Like, you know, people, influencers will say like, <clears throat> show up for a minute a day. And I'm like, and talk about what? Like, what, what does that look like? Like, hi, how's the weather? Where are you? Like, what, 
what? You know, so I couldn't really wrap my head around like I wanted to, because also the fact that they disappear is low pressure. So there were a lot of things I liked about stories, but I just hadn't found like how I was going to do it. So I sat down and I was like, okay, let's just do it for a week. That That's like for my ADHD brain. I'm like, I could commit to a week <laughs> of something different every day. Like, come on. So I did. I just, um, I wanted to do that. I'm so I'm totally rambling. Is this okay? Are you fine? Okay. Oh, yeah, no, okay. You're totally fine. <laughs> like, eh. Don't worry. You don't have to cut that out. If people know me, that's part of me. But so then I was also thinking I struggle with pricing. So it's kind of like two worlds. It's like a bunch of worlds combi combining. I struggle a lot with pricing because people are always like, oh, you could charge way more for that. Or you're not charging enough. And and sometimes I'm like, well, it's hard. It's, it's hard when there's not like a solid like cost of goods necessarily like if i make the or or like if you haven't made it like if you're like i'm gonna make gifts for people i say gifts not gifs so sorry not sorry because <laughs> uh, i think it sounds like gifts and i feel like my my gifts are a gift to the world so i'm like <laughs> that's what i'm going with so <laughs> i make gifts and i'm but i'm like i don't know how long it's gonna take me and some are more complicated than others and so you know, so I was also always like, I don't know what to charge and I don't want to be a jerk, but I don't want to undersell. Like I, it's hard to find that balance when you are starting and you have no idea. So, and also you're like, I just want some money. Can someone just give me some money? Like, I don't know. What do you want to pay me? Like there are a lot of things going on in there. So I was like, I'm going to be really clear that this is an experiment. And so that these prices are not like, I was like, they could stick around. They could not stick around. Like it could be perfect pricing and that's going to be the price or I could get overwhelmed and raise the price or so there was sort of like urgency to it but not like fake because I was like very upfront about like I don't know what I'm doing we're just experimenting here so I came up with five ideas so Monday was gifts which were a hit and I love making them and it was fun and the price did go up um but then I also ended up making a course to help people learn to make gifts you know so it was like oh people want these how can I do that? And then what else did I do? Like, oh, I offered to like make carousel posts for people. So as an art teacher, mm -hmm. I'm a very graphics oriented, like that's my jam. So I'm like, I'll design a carousel post for you. Cause in my head, sometimes you're like, Ugh. okay, carousel posts are a thing. Now I have to do 10 posts for one square. Like awesome. So I was like, let me do one of those for you. Nobody bought a, nobody bought a carousel post. So that was good information for me to be like, okay, maybe I'm the only one who felt overwhelmed by <laughs> making tips. And I mean, I never really promoted them after the week, but it was very clear that Monday gifts were like spank in Tuesday's carousel posts, you know? So it's like, and to be honest, I was yeah. having so much fun making gifts that I was like, okay, those are out. I think I had been dabbling with like, maybe I'll make a Patreon to support my podcast. And I was like, maybe Wednesday I'll like say... I'm going to order some stickers and do this thing, like, you know, three bucks, like support the podcast and get a sticker in the mail. One person. <laughs> it was like one of my teacher friends from when I used to teach before. I'm like, okay, well, thank you. And so I'm like, well, screw it. We'll order some stickers because I like them too. I had a design ready. So she got her sticker and I've used them since, but it was like, okay. And I mean, I did it one time. So I can't really say like, that was a flop. It can never happen again. But it was just interesting to see. And it yeah. took the pressure off me because I didn't do any, I didn't make a sales page. I didn't like put a bunch of effort into a Patreon or making a video or like whatever. I was just on my stories being like, who wants this funny sticker? Like maybe I could send out monthly stickers and I have an active imagination. So sometimes I think like, who wouldn't want this sticker? Like, it's amazing. All these people are going to just flock to my sticker club and I'm going to have 30 people, you know? And it was like, one. I'm like, okay, which I still might try it again. Cause I do, I do really like stickers. So I'm like, come on people. <laughs> but it was just sort of collecting data. Um, what are the other ones? Well, I mean, I think it's great cause you did it so fast and it's like just in three little quick days, making some quick little videos, you mm -hmm. got some insights into like what your current audience 
would be willing to spend money on and invest in and things like that. And I mean, there's like, there's so many business lessons in three little days, <laughs> three little ideas already. <laughs> and you did this for five days. Yeah. So it's like, I'm loving this. So what happened Thursday and Friday? Okay. So Thursday was um, a different kind of gift. It was like the video ones where you're like dancing, like, you know, the little stickers and people are like, it's a video of them like mm. dancing, which I didn't yep. sell any of. Like people seemed more interested in more like call to actions, graphic ones. Um, and then Friday was like a brainstorming session with me. So I want to do one-on-one coaching and I'm like, okay, could I help people with Instagram? So I put that, that was like $50. I mean, just to give people an idea too, like the, I'm really open about all this stuff, but the gifts were 20, <clears throat> $20. So I feel like people are just like, it's not, give me that. I mean, what, I mean, nowadays it's like 20 bucks. It's like, what else? Which and like I said, they did go up because <laughs> I was like, okay, but I sold a lot of them. And up until that point, like I had been struggling so much with what to offer and trying to make everything look so perfect before I revealed it to the world that I really ha- hadn't made very much money at all in my business. So it was like really exciting for me to like, people were like, okay, I'll take five. I'm like, oh, I just got a hundred dollars. Like, and I get to make five <laughs> gifts. Like, okay. You know, somebody else like, 140, like 80, you know, and I'm like, cha-ching, cha-ching. You know, I think I made like a thousand bucks that week or so. It was like more than I had made in my business. Like, I mean, ever. Like, I feel like nervous to say that because everybody's always bragging about how much money they make. And I'm like, ah, but it was really exciting. Yeah, but I mean, like, you didn't have to put a whole lot of effort in to do, like, the amount of time and energy that most people will put into building landing pages, putting together website pages, putting together little like paid ads and all that just to make a thousand dollars is insane. Yeah. You made quick little videos for like five days and just had a fun idea and you were authentic and you were real and you like let people into the messy middle. Yes. There's just so much value into doing that. I think and so many entrepreneurs shy away from it. Yeah. Like they're afraid to let people know like, oh, I'm not as, you know, I'm not this like huge thing or I'm not like, and they try and look and act much bigger, much different than what they really are. Yeah, it's a weird. And people pick up on yeah, it. Yeah, well, it's a weird, phenom- it's a lot of pressure to do that because I feel like you're supposed to like build authority and look like you know what you're doing. And if not, no one will buy from you because you'll look like, you know, whatever. And I feel like the experiments too were, it was nice to just... Like I used to make craft things. Like I would go to craft show, like set up the pop-up tent, like here's my stuffed monsters, whatever, whatever. And that was very much like, do you want this monster? It's this much money. Yes or no. You know, and like a very tangible thing. So when I was just on there being like, I can make you this thing. I can make you a gift. And people were like, yeah, I'll take five. It felt like for the first time I was like, oh, this is it. Because when it's too confusing and like lead magnets and Facebook ads and funnels and all this stuff I'm like okay that seems really hard but just saying like I like making these things and I can make you one would you like one (laughs) it's like duh (laughs) like part of me was like oh yeah I guess that's how it works but yeah I mean you simplified it you made it very clear I mean like I forget what guru said it but they said a confused mind never buys Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it's like there's too many choices you know it's kind of like when you want a late night snack and you run into your kitchen and it's right after grocery day and everything's restocked and you're like oh my god I want to eat everything (laughs) and then like you end up either going for the simplest decision like I'm just gonna grab a little bag of chips because it's a little bag of chips it's already like portion controlled and everything or you end up not even getting anything. I can't tell you how many times I've walked to the kitchen to get a snack. And like, I walk away with no snack yeah. because there's too many choices. <laughs> and it's the same way in business. And it's like, you really simplified it. Not only that, but you said like, hey, I'm really good at this thing. And I'm, I like doing this thing. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many times we try and look for somebody who's so good at like a thousand different things. But it's like, you're really good at Instagram and, you know, gifts for Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you not hire that person who understands gifts for Instagram to make you a gift for Instagram? Like- yeah. Yeah. Well, and I feel like people say like, ask your audience and do whatever. And even that sometimes you're, you're just like asking question. Like it's, and it's funny to me cause I'm, I just interrupted myself. I do that all the time, but I'll get back to it. Um, as an art teacher, I'm always like, just get started. Like to my students, I would be like, just start. You can't just sit in front of a blank paper. And my students would, especially in high school, probably the kids who didn't want to do it. were like, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking. And I'd be like, you can't just think. And then all of a sudden, like 
spew this masterpiece on the page, like you need to start, you're going to probably throw away that, but you know, like we have newsprint paper, cheap, cheap, thin newsprint, you start and you do it and you keep doing it and you keep changing it. And that's how you start. You can't just sit and think. And I was definitely stuck in like worrying about, you know, and even pricing. It's like, oh, I don't know. Cause $20, like what if it's too cheap? It's better to, you know, char- and charge your worth and all this, all this talk around money and mindset. And yep. I, I was just like, I think at the most, I mean, you know, I was just kind of thinking, I mean, I hadn't made, I've made some gifts for me, but I don't know what people are going to ask me. And that's where you get in the analysis paralysis. Cause you're like, well, what if they ask me for this? Or what if, what if they ask me for that? You know, some people just want their like podcast cover to wiggle. That's a lot easier than like yep. someone who wants a uh, Ferris Bueller's day off. And I want to, because I'm an art teacher, want to like hand draw on my iPad, Ferris Bueller, you know, in his like leopard sweater vest, like that one took longer, but it doesn't mean, you know, like, honestly, the, the podcast cover wiggling is felt fine. You know, when I was drawing for an hour, I'm like, okay, I think we're, we need to like figure stuff out or there has to be tears, but it gave me more information, like even in the process of making it or how many times do people want me to re-edit them? that's time. How much does it, like how much back and forth is there? Like, cause I, oh yeah, I have to ask people for their colors and their fonts and like things you don't think about until you're doing it. But if you're only just sitting at your computer and your mind trying to guess what's going to happen, you're like, you're not going to think about it until you do it. So that was all, that was all valuable. I totally feel you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I'm inspired already because like I run around and do a whole bunch of different things. Like I've got essentially four different businesses myself and then my husband has two and it's like, it's just been because I'm like, Oh, I want to do something new. (laughs) And I know how to spin up a business because it's like, I've been doing it for other people for years. Mm -hmm. So I just spin up a whole nother business and put together a website in a day and I have a whole little thing and it's like, hi, here I am. I'm doing something new. (laughs) And it's like one of the best advice somebody gave me around the pricing thing that just came to mind was like, especially with bigger things to launch it with a beta price, which is basically what you did, Mm -hmm. you know, but just to say, be clear that it's beta. Like this is my, I'm testing. I'm trying to see what my final price needs to be. I'm building something new that I'm offering. You're going to have to help me like make sure I'm doing it the right way and guide me. And it's going to be rough and bumpy edges, but like, you're going to get immense value out of it for less money and let's run. Yeah. So it's like, I've been testing that out myself going that way. And I think I'm like TikTok diagnosed ADHD. So it's making me think about things yeah. a little different. <laughs> I, keep like telling my my husband, for you page. I keep telling my husband things. I'm like, that's why I do that. So it's my, I know things. It's, don't hold it. You can't, you literally cannot hold it against me. So that's why I'm doing that. And I learn new things all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't open my mail, you know, and that drives my husband bonkers. And I'm like, just open it for me or do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm the same way. It's like I keep sending him like TikTok videos and stuff all day long being like, hey, look, that's why I do the thing. That's why I do that thing. That's why I do that thing. I'm like, I am ADHD. I don't care. TikTok diagnosed me. It is real. I know. I think it is real, especially for women, right? Like like Mm -hmm. grown up women right now, we just weren't diagnosed. And so I think all of us are like, hey, everything makes sense now. Yeah. Well, and like all the little coping mechanism thingies, like even for me to just sit here and listen and not interrupt on a podcast, I have two fidget rings oh, yeah. <laughs> that I'm sitting here fidgeting with. So it's like the things that you have to like, I'm just sitting here spinning these and trying to do it so quietly that the microphone doesn't pick it up. I've done that a few times and I've like been playing with them so hard. I've dropped them and thrown them in the floor. <laughs> <It's> so <like, laughs> <laughs> it's just like, that didn't happen. But yeah, no, I love, so it's like, such a very simple use case. And these, I love this kind of stuff where it's like all of these really good things that everybody tries to teach you to do are happening in your little one week experiment. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, be real about your audience. It's called a coming soon strategy, kind of like, Hey, here's yeah. something I'm thinking about doing. What do you guys think about it? Or like, are you interested in it before you actually go build the thing? Yeah. Like that's a really powerful strategy. A lot of people don't, you know, use like, especially big things like courses and stuff. I know the amount of energy that people put into courses. And it's like, you built a course on the back end of somebody saying like, Hey, we're really interested in doing the gifts. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Hey, well, you can pay me to do it. Or here's my course. So it's like, you got interest and knew that there was interest Mm -hmm. before you put the energy into building a course. Yeah. And it's funny you bring that up because I've done the thing too, where you like 
try to sort of interview your person to get in their mind. And I've done, I've done that like with a course and been like, oh, if you like identify as a stressed out mom or a business owner just starting or whatever, but it almost feels like you still don't really know exactly what to ask because it's just this like first meeting where you have an idea and you're like, would you say this? And the people are usually like, yeah, sure. Like I would say that, you know, but it's like, they're not giving you money because the ultimate test is like, who wants to give me money for this? Because <laughs> I do feel like, and I don't think anyone's trying, like, it's not malicious. They're just like, and I've done it. Like, I've been like, yeah, that sounds like an awesome course. Like, you're not going to add on. Like, I mean, I don't want to buy it. I mean, it, it's good for someone else. Yeah. Like, you're not going to add that on. So the real test is like, toss it out there and see who like, actually gives you money. I feel like I sound like I'm Mr. Wonderful and Shark Tank. I'm like, show me the money. Like, like and I'm not, and it no, doesn't have to I mean, be expensive. It's true. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like a beta price, and like I mean, you said. At least the beta And price. all you've got to have is like a are you interested sign up page even. So it's like, this is how much I'm thinking about pricing it for. This is what it's going to be. Yeah. You know, oh, you know what? sign up to be notified when it launches yeah. and then you're good to go. I should give this tip too, because I used a website called um, Kofi, which is like, buy me a, mm -hmm. it's like for a while I was like, oh, I can't say GIF or GIF. And was it Kofi, Coffee? What is it? Because it's like, buy me a coffee, but it's K-O-F-I, Kofi which they said rhymes with no fee because it's like no fees, but like PayPal took a fee when I put it into my PayPal account, but people can go there and pay you money. So I didn't even have a sales page. I was just like on Instagram. I was like, you can go here to pay me. Like this will reserve your, you'll be in the queue for gifts or whatever. So it was an easy way too, where I didn't have to like learn Sam Card or thrive cart or like, Oh gosh, how do I take money from people? It was like, super easy and you just sign up for an account and I think you can pay like six dollars a month and and then they won't take any fees but if you do it free they'll take some fees so even if you don't want to put up six dollars in the beginning but whatever it was a really easy way and I actually just linked it on my website so it was dnaseymour.com slash pay me <laughs> which helped me work through my money stuff because I do get like nervous to ask people for money but I was like let me make it kind of tongue-in-cheek to be like you want these you go to dnc.com slash pay me and you pay me and I'll make them so that was a really good tool for me to just easily set up and I didn't make any products they just I just say it's a hundred bucks and when they go there they just type in a hundred bucks and and pay me <laughs> literally pay me so that was really good for getting over the the fear of all the systems too, right? Like every time you think you're going to do one thing, it's like there's 15 things behind it that you're like, oh my gosh, now I have to make yep. a zap. Now I have to make a website. Now I have to go back to my email and tag them and send an email. And uh, so it was all on Instagram, like DMs and voice memos and just saying, go, go give me money if you want this thing. So it was super, super laid back. I think that's very powerful because, yeah, it's like so many people buy courses, they go through like training things and they're like, oh, this sounds so easy. And then they sit down to do it. And it's like, y'all, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. Like, I've been doing all that stuff for so many years that it's like, I see it. I'm like, oh, now you're going to have to build a website. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you're going to have to do Zapier. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Now, oh, no, there's there's email marketing platforms. Oh, now you're going to have to set up SPF and DKIM records. Now, and I'm yeah. like. And y'all really think normal people can do this. Like I'm sitting here going through courses mm -hmm. and it's like, why do you think normal people can do, can do <laughs> like you're sitting here telling them they've got to go do all this stuff. And like two years later, when they can finally get it all built, yes. maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Yeah. You know? And everything you named costs money. You know what I mean? Like what you can have like five zaps for free yep. this morning. I just deleted some zaps. Cause I was like, all right, we, we got to get this down. Cause we're not, I'm not, I, everything you know the little calendar is like if you want to have more than one event you got to pay us if you have this many subscribers we're gonna charge you more and so it's like cha-ching 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 and if you're not bringing in money like I wasn't which I was a teacher so I would kind of like it was like me spending like not getting a pedicure and paying for convert kit <laughs> you know like I made it work <laughs> but it was like dang I want to make some money like how do I make money but I do think we feel the pressure to look like people who've been doing it for years. Not only that, but also people who have teams, people who are like million dollar companies. Yeah. Like I would never be like, oh, I'm going to start an Etsy shop and think I'm Jeff Bezos. So why would I think my online marketing course is going to look like Amy Porterfield? Like that doesn't make any sense, but we <laughs> think it does because we're like, she seems nice and she seems just like a lady with a husband. That's me. I'll be like her. But 
it's not there's like a whole team so it's it's tricky and i think it's fun to just embrace the like i'm just here do you want this thing <laughs> sort of an attitude yep. and don't feel like you have to be perfect all the time and i feel like doing that and engaging with people to be honest, like my story views went up and then I felt more comfortable in stories and people, you know, it would just built on that thing where I'm like, oh, people want this and, you know, keep talking about it and doing it. So I don't know. It was really fun. I mean, making money I mean, is fun. It works even as you scale. Because <laughs> I mean, like when you look at people like Amy Porterfield, like she's basically still running around doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It just looks a lot more polished because she does have a team. Yeah. But like, that approach that you just mentioned, it goes from like a solopreneur trying to do their own thing, make their first thousand dollars all the way up to somebody who's making like millions. Yeah. Because they're just out there being authentic and we connect with that. Yeah. You know, but we don't it's have like to that's hire the premise like a... behind the whole thing I'm building right now with superpowers <laughs> into sales is it's like own yourself, go be yourself, yeah. go be an idiot, yeah. go let people behind <laughs> the scenes. And you know, mm -hmm. like one, one person that I really admire across them, um, he actually said that he thinks a lot of people that succeed in life succeed because they're not afraid to look like a fool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yep. and it's funny because I'm not afraid to look like a fool in real life. Like I am like the silliest, yeah. like whatever, like at happy hour, I will have people cracking up and probably saying things like I shouldn't say, like, especially like teacher happy hours are no joke, y'all. Sorry, but we're, we're talking <laughs> some smack about everybody at the school. But like, then I'm like, what happens? I think I was just like, okay, now it's like, now I have to be like official. Now I'm like starting a business yeah. or, or, I mean, I think a little bit, cause I was just admitting that I talk a little bit smack sometimes. Like I was like, now it's going to be like in writing or it's going to be on the internet, you know, and people are, it's on the internet forever. <laughs> oh my God, oh, you can never delete it or whatever. So there was like that element, but I was like, no, people like me at happy hour. Like I need to show up as Deanna at happy hour. I mean, I'm not saying I'm drinking it at 10 in the morning, <laughs> but, but just the vibe of just being me. And like, again, and so my social media following is growing and it's not growing like a trick, like one lead magnet gets me at the hundred thousand followers, but it's, it's growing. Like I'm attracting the people who like me and I'm being yeah. me. So it's, and it's way more fun for me, which is more sustainable because yeah. I'm not, not going to do something that's not fun. <laughs> Well, and I think you just hit on something else that's really important, too. It's like by being you, you kind of naturally attract the people that you like to work with. And so many people go the other way around, right? Like you kind of mentioned this earlier, like you build all these like personas and avatars. And, you know, it doesn't matter how much research you do into trying to get those perfect. At the end of the day, you don't those might not be the people that you want to work with. But if you're just running around being you, mm -hmm. you're going to naturally attract the people yeah. that you like to work with because <laughs> they're going to be attracted to the fun, zany you. And it's like we put all this effort into <laughs> the front end to make mm -hmm. it perfect. There's something even I'm trying to get better at is just embracing the messy middle. Like I was on a podcast the other day and the dog started barking and I was just like, you know what? I'm not even going to I'm not even going to edit this out. I'm like, guys, this is life. Yeah. Because, like, I'm encouraging other people to be crazy and free yeah. and just whatever. So, like... And if people hate dogs, to they can it. go away. No, just <laughs> then get out of here. <laughs> but, um... Shoot, I had something for, like, two seconds. Um, showing up with my phone. Hold on. I don't know. It went away. Um, <laughs> I do that all the time. Sorry. Maybe it'll come back. Yeah, apparently, that's why us ADHD people interrupt people all the time because we'll lose the thought if we don't. No, it's like survival of the fittest. <laughs> We're like, wait, yep. I have something. Like, ah, what was it? And you have to like sit there and repeat it in your head. I know. Over I'm and like, over what and over again, and then like you can't pay attention to the conversation because it's like just zooming in your head, and it's like, oh, yes. It's like there, I need like a mental sticky note where I can be like, okay, and then I can find it again later. Yes, absolutely. But, yeah, I haven't found that yet. So I keep paper and pen next to me at all times, but then it's kind of rude to be like, <laughs> hold on, let Bye. me jot this down. <laughs> right. Well, I know I've kept you for almost 30 minutes now. So, um, okay. So I know we've talked a little bit about some of your superpowers, kind of what, how you utilize them to help people on Instagram and things like that. Do you have any like final advice or tips that you want to share with everybody? Yes. I also just remembered what I was going to say. Do you want to hear it or no? Are we moving yes, past go it? For it? Okay. Well, I was just saying like, when you think about your ICAs and how you're going to speak to your audience and all that stuff. And I'm not saying it's not valuable in some ways, but I think about it and I'm like, I never sat down and was like, okay, now what kind of friends do I want to attract? How do I need to act? What do I need to say? How do I need to present myself to, to attract the right kind of friends? And it's like, things change like ebb and flow. You know, you have kids and all of a sudden like more of your friends maybe have kids. Like 
you know, you're 20 and you're like going out to the bar all the time. That friend looks like that. So you just have to like be yourself. I just always thought, oh, that's interesting. I never sat down and thought, who do I want to attract in my life? I just was me and that attracts who makes sense for me. So I just think that's good advice too. Just be yourself. But now that I was thinking about that, you have to ask that question again that you just asked me because I was excited to say that. (laughs) (laughs) I was just asking if you had any final advice or tips and that's actually a really good tip. So it worked. So um, yeah, anything else about like as far as Instagram, any advice on what you've seen work with images or I mean, anything? I think you really honestly just have to show up as yourself because if you look, like if we printed out a list of everybody who's like killing it on Instagram, they're all killing it for different reasons. You know, like there's people on TikTok who are very like, I'm going to teach you something over and over, you know, I'm gonna, and then there's like old people dancing where there's people, you know, just being funny. It, it doesn't, there's no like magical formula, but I really truly think that if you are yourself and you're having fun or not even fun, like it's not like everybody has to be cracking everybody up, but just like you enjoy what you're doing you're going to keep doing it. And I really think the one thing all those people would have in common is being consistent. So if you want to be consistent, I feel like you have to like what you're doing. I don't, I don't like willpower. Don't get me started on anti-diet stuff. But like willpower is not like you cannot be consistent. Like, I mean, I guess you could and be miserable, but like find something you like to do, find your thing and then just be consistent at it. And I think that's, that's the main thing. I love that so much. So we've learned a lot about you over this kind of thing, but like, tell us more about who you like to work with, what it is that you do and where can someone find you? Okay. So I love working with what I call quirky entrepreneurs is what the, the tagline I've decided. So like freaks and geeks is one thing I dabbled with, but you know, just people who are willing to at least try to be themselves or people who maybe aren't ready yet, but want to. So people who enjoy the fun, cause I'm very silly, so I can't turn that off. And just people who want to show up mostly on Instagram. That's my jam. Um, more consistently and more authentically, but that word, like that word is like, whatever, just have fun being you. Yeah. Let's say that. Cause authentic is like, getting it turned into very, something else yeah. like authentic is fake now I'm like what is it opposite day now you guys took my word authentic and like ruined it so <laughs> people who understand what I'm talking about when I'm saying some people say authentic and it's fake like if you know you know and you're my people so I love to help them either with like creating really cool graphics that really show off your personality or um showing up more in reels or in photos like I kind of sprinkled in some diet anti-diet body positivity stuff like that's my jam too So just kind of being willing to let your freak flag fly. So, and I did, because we talked about gifts so much, this this interview, I just made a new gift course. So one thing I'm also learning is that gifts are like fun things. It's like the, um, like at the register, the things you like at Old Navy, I feel like there's like the stuff by the register. You're like, I don't need this, but I want it. And I feel like that's what a gift is. It does up the fun of your brand. But it really probably is not something you need to invest a whole lot of money into, which you can pay me to do it or you can take my course. So I am obsessed with gifts. And I used to be kind of ashamed of it because I thought, oh, I'm not being professional. So I would like make jokes about how I use too many. And now I'm like, I'm going to use all of them. I don't care. So and I also have a really fun Reels membership because I know that people are a little scared of the Reels sometimes and they can be intimidating and annoying So I just started a Reels membership, which is actually only $13 because I also am sort of like on my anti-capitalist, like people charge too much rant these days. And it just supplies you with like trending audio and exact scripts so that you can just worry about all the stuff in your head that's holding you back. Like I'll do all the boring stuff and you can just show up and have a lot of fun. (laughs) That's my plan. I'm definitely going to be checking that out. And I'm guessing they can find all that at DeannaSeymour.com. Yes. And I'm on Instagram. Yes. That's my and only place I show up because it wasn't fun for me to be on lots of social media. So I'm only on Instagram, which is actually imperfect party on Instagram because that's my podcast. So nice. Hey. Cool. Well, I'll make sure we have links to everything, the podcast, the website, the Instagram, wherever people are watching this from on the interwebs. Cause we do put this out okay. everywhere. Cause it's good stuff. So, Perfect. and I don't have to do it all. I have a team. <laughs> um. I'm jealous. <laughs> one day, one day. Uh, it adds new complexities. So some of it's good, some of it's bad, but overall mm-hmm. it's like nothing would get done if it sits on my personal to-do list. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need a team. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much for coming onto the show today and for sharing all of your expertise with our audience. This has been like amazing. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was really fun. Awesome. So, okay. So entrepreneurs, this is your call to take action, right? Join our community at eta2day.zone and learn how to build a business that enables your lifestyle instead of taking over your life. Until next time, guys.